everyone, welcome back to The Untold, and today we have a very interesting, educational, and exciting episode. Today we're going to talk about uh, the role of firefighters, Yes. but we're also going to talk about how to be responsible mm -hmm. in case of emergencies. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a guest uh, who is... Um, firefighter. Firefighter. Book author. Author. Inventor. With a very sad story, I'm really There's a lot of uh, sad. sad stories, but we are here to learn from these stories. So let's not waste any time and welcome our guest right after this. We're back again with The Untold and uh, our guest today, Ali Adagar. Ali, let's start with an introduction about yourself. My name is Ali Adagar. I work as a firefighter at Kuwait Fire Force. I'm the author of Junior Firefighter, a book for children that teach them what to do in case of emergency. So interesting resume. It's, it's interesting. Um, uh, I think you didn't touch on all the, all the things that you've done in your life. I mean, you're also a Guinness World Record holder of two. Two we'll get Guinness into that. awards. Yeah. That's and incredible. an invention that saves lives, honestly. So let's start firefighting. What got you into firefighting? What is your story? And what do you like about it? Mm. So as a child, I recall uh, having a dream to be a superhero somehow. And we can't reach uh, the dream of being Superman or right, Batman. It's, right. It doesn't make any sense. I think firefighters sense. are the closest things to a superhero to a child. Kind of better. Everyone thinks yeah, firefighters think are superheroes. It. Kind of be it. better than all superheroes. There somehow. you go. Because you're real. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, it was an idea how to help people. Mm -hmm. I, th I thought becoming a police officer, I didn't reach uh, the point that I was searching for. Mm. I found it when I chose to become a firefighter. So um, I didn't know anything about firefighting. I didn't know what to do in case of emergencies or how mm -hmm. to rescue people. But during uh, my 13 years wow. being a firefighter, 13 uh, years. I knew a lot That's of a stuff, lot. yeah. I've seen a lot of incidents. I'm sure you have. Yeah. Scary incidents too. As always. I mean, yeah. aren't they all scary when you think about it, Ahmed? I mean, I, yeah. I mean, that's, it's that's, fire. That's a good take. That's a good take. We, we, we rescued a kitten a once, so it's not all scary. A kitten? Yeah. I thought that was only movies. No, that's So I can thing. call you guys that's and my thing. cat got stuck somewhere? All the time. All the time. It happens. Incredible. My yeah. cat is safe. <laughs> 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 anyway. But, okay. Uh, firefighting, that is your uh, main, main uh, profession. What made you want to write a children's book? Yes. How did that even, like... You're not a writer, are you? I write poetry, but write poetry. Uh, in Arabic mostly. Mm. So I, uh, my, my other degree is in English literature. Oh, okay. And uh, I read once uh, something about uh, teaching children uh, literature, and I was uh, thinking that it's kind of hard to teach them literature. Mm. So I faced an incident during my time as a firefighter. We went to an incident. Uh, we were searching for a uh, five years old Rashid and um, we couldn't find him because he was uh, burned to the crisp in the same room we were searching for oh. almost one hour. Wow. We couldn't recognize him mm. out fr from the furniture. From the door, yeah. That is. Yeah, so what, what I said. Sorry to hear that. What I said is uh, thank you. Is, uh, we need to fix that somehow. But Rashid uh, is dead now. What we need to, to do is, after lo losing all hope out from adults, I, uh, I focused on reaching f to children directly by writing Junior Firefighter as a book. So what we need to do is to teach children surviving skills. Cause he did it in a creative way in a children's book. Yes, in the story, Rashid, uh, the, the hero is Rashid also. The same, they, they share the same name. So it's basically dedicated to him. Mm -hmm. It is somehow. That's beautiful. I cannot yani, uh, blame anyone else but the parents. What I need, to, uh, maybe it's harsh what I, I'll be saying, but mm. that's what I, I need to say. As a parents, we need to take care of our children, and if someone died because of neglection or because my five years old doesn't know how to do wh what to do in case of emergencies or right. he doesn't know anything about surviving skills. So uh, they're the one to blame, and uh, what we need to do is to, 
avoid adults and go directly to children and try mm. to teach them what to do in case of emergencies. And that's what I did. imagine at schools it should be a thing at an early age. Yes, but uh, it's not it's yet not here in the, Kuwait. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we we printed sixty-seven thousand copies. Uh, wow. Yes, less than a year. Mashallah. That's incredible. And uh, have you seen a positive impact from that book? Plenty, actually. Mm. I received uh, more than two phone calls from families telling me that their children uh, did exactly what they need to do in the book. And they called 112 and they mm. stay calm and they remember their home addresses. They saved everyone because uh, usually uh, children will be focusing on stuff that we, we don't care about anymore at the house. So what was the instructions exactly and uh, what were you teaching the kids inside the book? Let, let me ask you a question. Do, do you know what to do in case of emergencies? We run. In general? Yeah. We run. <laughs> we'll try to take it a bit more seriously. <laughs> uh, what kind of emergency? She, she, she had the right answer. Right but, answer. But yes, I'm gonna we go. run. No, kind of, kind of, but I'm going to talk about it later. Okay. So what, what do you think you should do? Is it a fire emergency? Yeah, at your house. At um, my house? Yes. It depends on what kind of fire it is. But again, I'm not an expert. <laughs> I mean, if, if the electricity started, like, you know, uh, blowing up, I don't know what to do. I'll leave it and run. That's you all, don't all don't I you have fire extinguishers at your house? Uh, we yeah. don't. Do that's you? <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I blame adults all the time. We see these fire extinguishers all over the place. But we don't but know how I to use them. I doubt how many people know how to use them. I don't. There was zero classes at school that taught you how to use them. So am I supposed to copy whatever I saw in a movie? <laughs> they usually have instructions on them, but at You're the time... You're going to panic at the time. You're trying to put something that's on fire <laughs> off. I, I have been in a few fire accidents. So oh, yeah, so cooking? Don't get... <laughs> no, no. Um, I remember one time the uh, the heater exploded. I was sleeping next to it. Wow. The thing is, I actually am very calm in case mm. of fires. I don't know why. I got stuck in fire like three times. And okay. every single time I was like... Interesting. Yeah. She got stuck three so, times. So, so as an example, I can yeah. have you two guys. Uh, I can't blame you for not knowing what to do in case of emergencies or how to use fire extinguishers. Right. You could blame schools. You're totally right. Mm. But you have your phone. You can search. Right. Why didn't we take the initiative to learn ourselves? Because we don't care. Because we don't care. No, it's because we think we're never going to It's gonna never going to happen to me. It happened to me three times, <laughs> and I still don't think it's going to happen again. So I think, I think yeah, um, we need to blame ourselves. Uh, we I mean. share the blame, I guess. Share you the share the blame. Share I don't the share the blame yeah, with you guys. <laughs> You're the firefighter. <laughs> firefighter. Not not only as a firefighter. I can do my job and get and just get paid and go get some sleep. What I'm doing here is I'm writing a, a book teaching children how to survive in case of emergencies. True, true. So what you what you need to do is run for run. children only, not adults. Adults should. Stay calm and so try to ran. call you one and two no, no, to f- find Your find first instinct was to run. <laughs> and but you had I like three experience. So. Yeah. What you did? You didn't fight the fire. You just sit there. I don't know. Like uh, I was uh, the first time I got uh, I was in a fire accident. I was seven or eight years old. Oh. And the heater next to me exploded, and my mom just saw it. She wrapped me in a blanket. She put me on the side. I don't know why. She did the right thing. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then she went and she started calling everyone to leave. And then she forgot me inside. And she oh, went back inside. I was still just sitting there in a blanket <laughs> waiting for her. I was a kid. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, kind of sad, but still funny when I think about it. The second time I got stuck, I was in, in an apartment. Mm-hmm. We had, we lived in an apartment and it had a balcony. So the first thing I thought about when uh, because um, the lobby was on fire, and the smoke was coming uh, like to the first floor where we lived. And I remember the smoke, um, you know, uh, filling the place. Mm-hmm. Even our neighbors came to our apartment because uh, we had a balcony. So the first thing I thought of, I'll just sit in the balcony until somebody just <laughs> turns it up because I cannot leave the fires downstairs. I cannot even use the stairs. So it's either I stay in the balcony. This is the safest choice that I wait for, you know. Or skydive, I guess. But I, yeah. Skydiving is <laughs> not an option. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of people chose to throw themselves out of buildings. No, I just well, how is that? A, how is that a solution? It is a solution when you're burning and you have 10,000 degrees uh, after your back and burning you alive. You would choose to throw yourself. Yeah. Well, am I surviving that jump? You wouldn't care. 
You just want it's to that fight. bad. Yeah, it's during that dur bad. during during the incident, you wouldn't be thinking you don't about want anything to burn else. Alive. Yeah, you will be. You, you have just, two options: either yeah. to burn alive or to, to fall to your death. To to break plenty of bones and maybe you would be survive. Maybe you would survive. Yeah. True. Yeah, I, I've seen a few videos of that. That's harsh. That's really harsh. That's why we, s we ask children in the book to stay calm, to call 112, to run away. We don't ask children to use fire extinguishers. Mm -hmm. I, I mainly focus not to, to ask children to do anything. Because mm -hmm. what they need to do is to run away. What Rashid did during his incident, he, uh, he was playing with matches, and uh, he burned something in the room, then he put it in the cabinet, and then he hid under the bed. Mm. Until oh. he died, that's oh. what happened. So, uh, so if you if you teach children to escape, that's it. Just to run away, safe. They will be safe. Yeah. That's actually. <coughs> and I have yeah. another story because my cousin got stuck in a fire as well. You she have a lot of fire stories. <laughs> I mean, I haven't. But no, it was my uncle's house. I remember the story. It happened last year. Uh, so uh, she did, I don't know what she did, but she did something really stupid. Uh, yeah, she was using uh, a hair straightener. Mm. She's only like 13 or something. So the first thing she thought of, she needs to hide this. It was like a small fire. So she started putting things on it and it got bigger. So, so she started growing. running and she went and, and she went downstairs. She went to the uh, garden outside the house and she just sat there. <laughs> Watching the house burn. <laughs> no, until everybody realized, and okay. she was already out. But yeah, that, that, I think she was smart a little How bit. How old was she? 13. She she was twelve, thirteen back then. We're teaching children now f from year five years old, six years old, to call one one two and to give them the their home addresses. Home address. So what do you think yeah. was the right thing uh, for her to do? Call one one two. To stay calm. Okay. To shout fire. To call one one two. She panicked. She she has um you know that personality of. Um, she, she barely talks, so that's... So you, for, let's, let's that. take you an example. You have three three fire incidents, and yet you didn't care enough to, to, to teach yourself uh, how to use fire extinguisher. I think it's not about personality disorder. It's most, mostly about... Most houses don't have fire extinguishers. Yes, exactly, and you can ask yourself why. If We're adults now. Yeah. We can't blame the government. We can't blame schools, but mm. what we need to blame ourselves. I think it's probably a simple process to use the fire extinguisher. We yes. just don't have an idea. <laughs> we should we should demonstrate something. We should here. demonstrate you something. You have fire extinguisher. <laughs> we do have a fire extinguisher. <laughs> oh, yeah. But well, behind it's, the it's, scenes, he'll I teach don't us. Think, yeah, he'll but I don't us. think we're allowed to touch this. It's for emergency. <laughs> it's for emergency. Yeah. It's so true, let's true. not miss. <laughs> with the, maybe they'll need so it later. The, the, the studio is doing a great job having fire extinguishers here. You should have at your house as well. Okay. Yeah, that's true. true. Okay, true. now uh, let's talk more about you. You're our guest today. We want to hear uh, your story. Let's talk about the Guinness World Records. You have two of them. Yes. Two, two Guinness World let's Records. How did one? that happen? Yeah. So anyone kind of can get Guinness World Records, like for eating plenty of sandwiches, for, uh, I don't know. Don't diminish the fact you have <laughs> no, a world I'll, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say this. <laughs> 18. <laughs> He's like, can anyone he, can get a world record. Can you eat 18 <laughs> burgers at a time? Okay. Let me finish one. Uh, so yeah. so uh, what we did, we chose something that no one can do again. Mm. That's what we did. Okay. We didn't actually break any world record. We established, a, established a new yeah, world yeah, record. Yeah, yeah. And we made sure that no one can, be no one can do this what again. What was that? Having the biggest flag in the world inside the biggest cave in Oman. Oh, oh, I heard about guys, that. You were yeah. part of that team. Okay. Yes. All right. All right Incredible. All right. And the other nice. one? The other one having the biggest flag, the same flag. It's a football field. I thought that these would be fire related for some reason. <laughs> but <laughs> no, okay. Not, not exactly. But I used to play at uh, uh, Kuwait Fire Fit Team. Mm. It's CrossFit for firefighters a long, long time ago. CrossFit for firefighters? Yes, it's, it's called uh, that's, Kuwait Fire that's Fit interesting. Team. It's a national team, actually. I think I think it's necessary. I mean, Fourth. firefighters have to be fit, fit right? Yeah. I mean, you, you can't yeah. be running around. You can barely breathe on the stairs. Well. But uh, you know what? I want to continue talking about this, but how about we go on a break first, and then we'll continue talking about this because this is really interesting. So quick break, and we'll be right back. So 
we're back again with our guest. And uh, before we go on a break, we're talking about a few things. I want to go back to the, you know, uh, Guinness World Records and uh, the story behind both, uh, you know, the awards. And then we'll talk more about you being a firefighter. So it was an idea. Three of us were uh, firefighters at Kuwait Fire. To elaborate, who's the three of you? <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Colonel Khaled Kanaan, Lieutenant Colonel Yusuf Al Galaf, and uh, our dearest friend Hussein Al Naqi. Okay, that's for uh, you. Like it's the FBI, you're going to shine a light <laughs> on him now. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant. What did you do? <laughs> Keep going. So, three of us, we played at Kuwait national team for firefight competitions. And uh, that's what gathered us actually to do this mission. So uh, we've, we had plenty of guys helping us also, but everyone, every individual have different uh, mission to do. Right. Uh, it is something I dared a lot of people to do. No one can do this again. Mm. To the biggest w flag in the world right. inside the cave. So we stayed in Oman for like six days. Six days. Okay. Five of them uh, in the cave. Inside a cave. Kind Must of. be terrifying. Though. It is, it is terrifying because uh, no one went there the way we did before. Wow. We sit for a really long time. Usually, people go there for. It has to be risky too. I mean, they. I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are firefighters. You're supposed to save people, but to put yourself in risk, isn't that you know? Like, I mean, for was the plan to get you know the Guinness Award record or? It was, but uh, as firefighters, we we don't value our life in case of emergencies as much as uh, we value uh, saving people di different lives yeah mm. mostly we focus on uh, sacrificing mostly our health but, but what we did in a month yeah for these for these records you didn't have to sacrifice all that no it was it was fun but uh, we faced a lot of stuff Challenges I built we we stuff. should have better training we didn't because mm. the guy who was responsible uh, for training us, he gave us different story, different scenarios. But when we went there, it was a different scenario, yeah. different situation. Yeah. Yes, and they trained for something different, basically. Exactly. Okay. And we um, thought it was it will it's going to be a piece of cake. Then it mm. became a piece of lava somehow. Piece of lava. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. What was the worst thing you experienced in there? Uh, I mean, staying in cave. What about the food, it's, it's, the water? It's, it's, the, food's, the food's manageable, even okay. even water. But what we the problem was hanging on a rope for like more than one hour. A rope? Yes. Mm. Uh, can you explain? We were climbing the cave. Okay. Yes. We didn't, the climbing we didn't up to the cave? We, we, climbing, climbing down, down to the cave, but again, down. you need to go out of the cave, so you need right, to go right. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like we, do, we, did, we did this <laughs> manually, actually. Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. Just <laughs> and the second one was also a flag? No. So this is the, the one I'm talking about, the second one, yeah. and the first one is also a flag, but in, on the top of Jebel Shems, mm. the highest uh, mountain in GCC. That's true. Who came up with this idea that I need a record with a big flag? <laughs> we we had it on 25th of February, so... Oh, so it's a national thing. It okay. is, it is. Nice, and, nice, and we had uh, a lot of support from the government and the... Okay, Army. that makes sense. Okay, but who, the who took holidays. the initiative? It's an, a team, it's team. not one, one guy idea. So you guys just gathered that and like, hey, you want to do something? <laughs> Let's put... You want to be in the history books? <laughs> There, there was a guy with a, the biggest flag, and he didn't do anything with it, just the biggest just flag. He displayed it. That's it. Oh, That's it. So, so you thought you want to do something he special. Tried, he tried actually to have Guinness World Record, but he didn't. He couldn't. He failed. And then we talked to him that we can join forces so that we can do something about it, and we did. Oh. Firefighter, record breaker, author, inventor. Where did the invention... Firebots Talk about the invention. I yeah. mean, firebots. Fire pot? Is it bot. called? Pot. Bot. bot. Okay. As robotics. A, as a robot. robotics. Robotics. Okay. Yeah. Firebot. Firebots. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That makes so, sense. So, so uh, most firefighters uh, suffer after retirement from cancer, lung cancers, or uh, all because of their work. Yes. Yeah. Dealing with fire. Yeah. 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 Radiation is also radiation. also they they, they may uh, get uh, a lot of radiation. Radiation uh, from what? Radioactive materials here in Kuwait, ah, in like Kuwait. like a lot of countries, they use radioactive all the time. But mm. if you think of it, can you mention a place here in Kuwait that use radioactive stuff? Not on the top of my head. Hospitals. 
Oh, of course. All the time. Yeah. The yeah. X-ray and true, they treat true. cancer with MRI gamma radiation. Yeah. Yeah. Gamma radiation. So if if a guy would go there, he would receive a 25 millisiever, uh, which means he can't go to another mission until um, 12 months. Mm -hmm. So we invented the robot so that we can uh, control the robot remotely so that we can actually fix the incident if it's include any hazards or biohazards or radiations. Uh, what form is this robot uh, taking? A tank. A tank? Yeah. A How tank? big? You were thinking of Iron Man. No, 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 no. I was thinking Do of Do you have a, a picture of this? <laughs> I was thinking of a, like a Roomba. You know, Roomba? <laughs> you know, no way. but like a bigger one, <laughs> no. you know? When I say tank, it's, it's literally a tank. The size of an actual tank. No, come no, on. Okay. It wouldn't be useful at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, true. You mean like the shape of a, a tank? A little bit smaller than the table. Yeah, it's a, a little it's bit a, smaller than the table. Yes, it's in the shape of the tank and How, function as a tank okay. also. Okay, does it enter a building that's on fire? Yes. How, stairs and all that? Yes. How? Is, it can handle stairs. It can handle yes. stairs. But nice. when it, I can handle it, it can handle it can somehow. We need climb a video up. of this. Do you have a video of this yeah, that I think we can guys, watch you later? Have a video there. We have a video. Yeah, Where we have to. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we, well, I ha I need to watch this later. Yeah, but it's an um, invention. But what about the fire? Is he fireproof? So all of all of uh, most citizens think of firefighters' job as just putting out fires, but we deal as for from my station. I work at Hazmat Station which means hazardous materials. Mm. We deal with radiation, with biohazard, with chemicals, with corrosive acids. Okay. So it's not only fire. It, it's not fireproof, but it, it can resist fire somehow. We added thermal cameras, we added sensors so that we can detect any poisons or gases or radiations. Or leaks. The, the use cases for this is not going into fires. It's mostly the radioactive places that you send them You out. can say radioactive, but we can help people without Endangering firefighters. Yeah. In really severe cases where, where there's radiation mm. or something, it can or be very useful. So let's talk about uh, from a technical standpoint, how did you come up with this firebot? It and how did you invent it? Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's a very good question. Yeah. It was an idea. You had, you're the Steve Jobs of the box. No, this is too much for me. <laughs> what you I mean by that is Steve Jobs stole mean. the idea, so not Steve Jobs. You know, <laughs> to embrace the compliment. You've done a great job. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, so, okay, let's hear it from your side. Uh, you had the idea, <clears throat> and then the engineers executed your idea. Not engineers. Well, My know. students. Okay. Because <laughs> I majored in English literature, so I... Uh, you just gave the idea to your students. Were they engineers? No, In, they're not yet. They're they didn't graduate yet. Engineer uh, students. students. Yes. yes. Okay. At college what engineer college? students took your idea as a project for them. The capstone for graduation. Yes. Yes, and made it into a reality. In yes. what, Kuwait. What yes. year was that? Uh, we did it on five courses, so you can add two years and, when and did a half. It, when did you have finished robots? No, we finished it at 2021, but. Okay. And then we keep kept development. So mm -hmm. each course, a new student add new ideas for oh, the robot. Oh, so it yeah. was like not even just this class; it was multiple classes. Yes, we have wow. like five versions of this robot. The, vi the final was sitting now, at my house. Now, is this invention uh, first of its kind? It is. Uh, is it patented? It is. Oh. Yes. Wow. No one did this before. No one have any Globally, idea. Globally, we don't have firebots. You created. You, no, you have firebots. Okay. But what's about this invent invention is that yeah. it's, it's it's specialized for hazmat. Okay. Yeah, That's for the, hazardous okay. materials, it That's can what I was trying to get it at. can deal with corrosive acids. It can mm -hmm. deal with radiation. It can deal with the biohazard, with poisonous gases. It it can rescue people. It can observe the location. It can detect uh, the gases mm -hmm. and radiation. So no one did this before. That's amazing, honestly, yeah. and the fact that engineering students are the ones who ex executed yeah. it. So we have so good engineering colleges here in Kuwait, I guess. So um, after you have done about all of this, have you actually tried it in real life? Oh, yeah. has it been tested in real life scenarios? We, we use it till today, yes, oh, all the really? time. Have yeah. you, I mean, are they using it in other stations? Have you built enough? No, no one, no one. Or is, is it just a prototype? No, it's not a prototype. We are using this in, in severe situations. So if there is an emergency, mm. I would use it so that we can save life and we Do don't we want to endure. Uh, multiples of this robot? Or is it one or Around two? No, no, the, just you know, one only. Just one? Yes. Only in your station? Yes. 
And not not my station actually. Uh-huh. It's not my house. Oh, in your <laughs> house. Wait, so, it's mine. So it are we gonna start manufacturing more of these? Are you gonna license it? Yes, we license it already. But nice. what, what we need for manufacturers, I don't want to go to be capitalist here, oh, Annie. Yeah. I want to. But avoid you need budget for these kind of things. We had we had great budget from uh, some uh, petroleum company. They mm-hmm. gave us a great budget, and they sponsored it, Annie, for free. They didn't want anything back, not even one logo on, on the bot. So we can find a lot of companies that can do the same thing. Mm. But if we want to go and sell this, I think we will need a factory. True, true. Yeah. Licensing is easier, I would say. Yeah. Let yeah. them handle everything and get me paid. <laughs> <laughs> but again, we're talking about an invention that is life-saving, yeah. not just for people, but also for firefighters. And I think if this goes global, a lot of people would appreciate this and a lot of firefighters would, you know, be... Mm. Uh, it makes their jobs easier. It would easier, make your you know? name and Kuwait's name recognizable. It is. It's 2023 and we still live in capitalism. So every time we get a new invention, we try to give people something new. Uh, companies try just to be greedy with this invention. So I think the government should adopt this invention so that no one can uh, benefit out well, of it yeah, in, in a very bad way. And all that, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, what's the uh, response at the station after you've introduced this uh, uh, invention to them? We, we received an award from the university and from the first station. Nice. That's yeah. incredible. And you've actually used it in some cases in yes, the past, we right? Did. Yes. Amazing. Incredible. That's just incredible. So just have an idea for something and execute it and all the hard work that goes And see, I love it. the fact that you're not an engineer. You just had the idea, but you made sure... I told sure. him he's Steve Jobs. He doesn't want to be Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> he's not Steve Jobs. He just made sure... Like Tesla. It's better, he Tesla. He had an idea. He just gave it to somebody else, and then he owned it back. <laughs> That's what, what, I did, what I did, I was, I was actually teaching English literature mm-hmm. at the university, and then when, when we talked about this, they needed a firefighter. I had the idea, and we keep developing the idea all the time in each course. Beautiful. Well, well, they're telling us we need to wrap up, but before we end, a word of advice. Well, you have a huge audience to talk to as a firefighter, book author, inventor. The floor is yours. You can look at the camera yeah. and just give us an advice. So if I would advise you to do something, I want you guys to teach your, your children what to do in case, in case of emergencies. Teach them, teach them to call 112, teach them to, rem- to recall their home addresses. And remember, if you're bringing children to this life, it's your fault if anything happened to them. And with the new law, new Kuwaiti law for families and children, you will be held responsible. So I would ask you to take good care of your children. Wow. That's, Thank you. That's deep, and I am glad that you shared that message. It's a strong message. Thank you for your time for today. Thanks, thanks for having Thank me. Thank you for being there. So well, we'll go on a quick break, and we'll come back for the wrap-up. So we have reached the end of our episode from The Untold. It was very interesting. Very insightful. Very insightful. Very, um, I would say, useful. I mean, he showed us how to use... I love that he took the time behind the scenes to show us how to operate a fire extinguisher. Now at age 28, I know how to use that. Thank you. (laughs) I, I, yeah, the same goes for me at my age. I'm not going to say how old I am. It's a girl She's thing. She's younger than me. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, at this age, learning how to use, uh, you know, fire extinguisher, it's shameful. But at least I got to learn, and uh, I think. I we think we need, need to do more, take more um, these. And if I had advice for the audience, emergency classes, you know. Yeah, if I had advice for audience, at least if you don't want to join classes, there's all videos and social videos medias on social that you media can watch. I never say it's never. It's <laughs> like it's gonna happen uh, eventually. God forbid, but it happens to you everyone. It's better to be prepared than sorry. Better to be cautious than cautious you know. Than, you know. To be sorry for for a tragic incident you could have prevented. Yeah, just because you were too lazy to watch something on YouTube or you're too lazy to look something up. So anyway, that's my advice. And I'm glad we had him today. Uh, definitely one of my favorite episodes uh, that we have recorded so far. So uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.
Good night. Good night.